Hello and welcome back. What we're doing to start off with is masking uh, the canopy. Now, what I use, as you see, is a slip of Tamiya masking tape, a cocktail stick, and what I do for that is to score around the edges of the frame, just so I've got a nice sort of like look-see of where the blade is actually gonna be going. And what I use for cutting it is, as you can see there just above, is a number 11 blade. I try to make it as new as I possibly can, just so I get a nice decent cut. So all you do is apply the blade onto the actual canopy and very likely just score it around. Now, if it's a smaller scale, what I do tend to do is I go for the Eddard pre-cut um, masking set. It saves a lot of time, a lot of our sake, and a lot of swearing. Um, yeah, so all I'm gonna be doing is just finishing off. I'm just scoring the last bit. Gently peel it off. Then all you can do is go back with your finger, press it down to make sure it's got into all the places that you need to. And that's it. Happy with that, job done. Okay, next bit before we stick the old canopy on is the doors. Now you get two doors, uh, left and right, believe it or not. And all I'm doing there is just putting a couple of dabs of glue, just so I can secure the actual door onto the fuselage. Now it's quite a nice fit, it's nice and snug, um, but with me, I did have to play around with it just to make sure that it's flush with the rest of the fuselage. And all you need to do is just maneuver it around, it should stay where it is, what it did for me. And once you're happy, you can then apply the actual glue that's gonna secure it. Now for me, it's Tamiya Extra Thin, and the good thing about it is you can just tap the glue onto the subject itself, and it'll run down the actual sides and it'll secure it nice and easily. So once you've done that, you can just make any more small adjustments if you have to. You have a quick check, making sure it coincides with the fuselage and the other one that you've already glued on. All nicely done. And then we can go on to putting the gun sight on. Bit fiddly, but it's more than doable. So with the gun sight on, and I used um, super glue for that one, so it's nice and secure. And all you have to do is follow the instructions nicely. Now with the front um, canopy, what you do is have a quick test fit first, making sure that you get it up the right way around. And then once you're happy with that, then you can start by applying the actual glue itself. Now the glue I'm actually using for this one is, thank you Molly, uh, I can't speak for myself, is the old MIG Ammo Ultra Glue. Now it is decent stuff, it really does work really well and it works quite quickly as well. So all I'm gonna do is just basically lining where the actual canopy is going to be sat making sure you're not putting too much glue but don't worry about it too much if you have because it's easily wiped away as you can see there i've just wiped a little bit away on the starboard side because i just put a little bit too much on so canopy in hand just maneuver it around and you can just slot it in And again, you've got more than enough time to maneuver it around to make sure it's actually stuck in exactly the place where you want it, or as it says, per instructions. Then if you've got any glue seepage, you can just go around with a wet cotton bud around the edges, no problem at all. The rear one, that just popped in really nicely, no dramas whatsoever. And if you really do feel the need for it, you can pop a bit more glue on just to make sure that you've got a nice steady secure placement so there you go um you could do have the option of having the um, canopy open or closed and it does fit quite well either way that you want um, i'm having mine open so you can have a look down in the cockpit and all that 
all lighted up. So yeah, once it's dry, we can mask up the rest of the, the canopy and we can go on for a bit of painting. So there you are, all done, all secure. Really happy the way that it's sat. It's secure and it's not going anywhere. Right, there's two different types of paint that I do use um, on a regular basis. This one being an acrylic, which is your standard uh, Tamiya um, paint. And this has been XF21 Sky because I'll be using that on the, the Gladiator very, very shortly. So that's the acrylic. And I use a lacquer paint, which is from Hataka and from the Orange Range. Um, and basically, this is what I use. The other ones I do have, uh, I don't use these on a regular basis, but I've got um, some AK paint, again, which is a, an acrylic. And also I use the, the Meg Ammo, again, which is a, an acrylic paint. Okay, so with those, with the thinners that I use for them, I tend to um, use more of the manufacturer's thinners um, for each of the paints, as in I use X20A for the Tamiya, and also I use the um, lacquer paint thinners for the actual paint itself. Now I do have the other thinners for these paints, but again, I don't really use these that often, okay? Only if I'm really stuck for a color and this range may have the color that another range doesn't. So that's only really when I use it or if I've got a particular subject that I'm painting, whether it's armor or something else like that, that needs something a little bit more different a different shade and whatever okay so that's what I use I do use also um, the Vallejo brush paints as well and they are fantastic um, when it comes down to brush painting okay but hopefully more of that on a later video so how do I do uh, thinning and to get them through the actual airbrush itself again it's entirely up to you how you do it but basically all I'm gonna be doing is showing you is the acrylic first, and it's basically the same principle as for the lacquer paints as well. So I'm generally just gonna open it up. This hasn't been used for quite a while. I get my little badger stirrer, but you can buy these cheaper, as in like the coffee whisk things. So you can use that. Give it a quick stir, bang it on, and just making sure that you're thinning it, not thinning it, you're breaking up all the paint and all the pigment and it's all nicely mixed together. You don't have to do this for like eons. As long as you can look down into the paint cup and see that it's all probably mixed up, then that's fine. Give it a bit of a tap. And all I do is stick the end of it in some more water and that's it, finished. Oops. So with that done, how do I thin it? Right, I get one of these little measuring um, pots and I get a little pipette thing. Get my thinners, fill the pipette up. Then all I do is go one, two, three, do I balls? All I do is I get it and I'll go squeeze it in just a little bit, get the old paint. Oh, well, oh, 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 just get it in. Just pop it in and start giving it a bit of a stir around. Now what you're looking for, well, what I'm looking for, should I say, is quite a thin mixture. Maybe sort of like the consistency of say milk or slightly a bit more than that, as in a lot more thinner. And then just get your paintbrush and just run it off the paint and just look at the paint cup itself. And you can see the paint basically working its way down the cup back into the actual main paint. And you can generally see how easy it is for the paint to go down and what you're actually left with. Now, for me personally, yeah, that's not bad. And again, it's just a guesstimate. Once you've done it a few times, you can guesstimate really that, yeah, that's a quite a thin, decent bit of uh, paint, that. I'll keep that. So all you need to do is to get your airbrush, 
get your airline. Give it a quick blast around. And then, if you're doing a bit sort of like um, a large sort of like area, then obviously, yeah, fill your cup up. But what I intend to do is to just fill it about maybe halfway. But for this, because there's only a bit of a demonstration and I haven't got a lot of paint in there anyway, well, I can just chuck it all the way in. Just wipe the rim around it and there you go. Now to test that you've got a decent amount of paint or the right amount of paint coming through, all you can do on this back here, okay, you've got like a dial that you can turn and you can sort of like basically dictate how much paint is going to be coming through once you pull in the trigger back. Because with a dual action one, literally you're pressing it down for air and then you're pulling it back as in for the trigger to see how much paint is going to be coming out. Now me personally, yeah, not bad, a little bit too much. So all you can do is just dial it down a little bit more and there's less coming out, okay? So, but also with this as well, you can go a little bit further in, and let's demonstrate on this bit of kitchen towel here. You can go in really nice and tight, get the air in without putting any of the paint on, and then you can just pull back on the trigger and you can get some really, really nice thin lines. Now this is gonna work well with us because on this video I'm gonna show you how I actually do freehand um, like airbrushing, okay? And without uh, particularly uh, using any sort of like masking tape or anything else like that, okay? So I've got that, I'm happy with that. And really what you should be doing is before you actually commit to anything of a major thing, of a, a major build or whatever, is just to practice. Now I've been doing this like for 15 years. Do I still practice? Yeah, I do actually. Um, because there are always certain things, certain angles, certain subjects that are gonna be different. So the best thing to do is get a bit of practice in, making sure that you've got your paint mixture um, all nice and how you want it. And basically you've got enough air coming through, um, your surface of your model is clean and all that kind of business will come second nature. But if you need to go back and just basically just teach yourself a little bit more, then that's what it's there for. Just, just do it, okay? No arguments. So anyway, moving on. What is your mixture uh, or ratio uh, X, Y, Z and all that kind of cobblers when you're doing paint? Me personally, I have absolutely no idea. Like I said before, if it looks or consistency of milk, I'm happy. What air pressure do you um, always specifically, always, always spray out, Lenny? Um, well, normally I spray around about between 10 to 15 PSI. Now, if you're in a different sort of like climate than I am, because um, I'm in Inguland and it's mildish, it's a bit cool, um, I would say the room in here is probably about 15 degrees maybe. But then again, you might be in the Philippines, you might be in America, you might be in Russia. All these different things, okay, will um, alter or change the way that you airbrush. Now, wherever you are in the world, you might be doing 25 PSI, or you might be doing five PSI, or you might be doing exactly the same as I am. It, all depends. So I'm not going to say you have to give a ratio of 50-50 every single time of your paint. I'm not going to say you have to spray at 15 PSI because you don't, okay? Like I said before, this isn't a definitive video. It's basically to tell you that you airbrush the way that you feel easiest. And I must be doing some good because Molly's snoring. Aren't you, Molly? Yes, you are. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is basically show you how I airbrush without using any masking tape. Okay, so let me get prepped. I'll get back to you. Okay, just before we go on to like 
the uh, freehand. Basically what I've done is, is just use the, the Tamiya acrylic just to use the, the, well, the underside of the top wing of the Gladiator. Now, what I've done is, is because I've used like a, a very, very dark gray, um, I can use this to change like um, the density of the actual color. Now, if you see along here, you've got where all the um, struts would be all along the way of the top wing. All that is, is a thicker amount of paint that's gone over those to make it look as it's more prominent. Well, it is actually on the on the actual um, on the plastic, but if you do it on the actual um, paint itself, you may do it sort of like so it's got like a thicker paint. It'll bring it out more and make it a bit more stand out. And once you've done that, then you can just do an overall coverage of a very very thin sort of like layers of paint over and over as many times as you need to to try and get that sort of like different contrast between the two bits of paint, if that makes sense. Anyway, right, that's the under bit of the upper wing. So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna basically show you very, very quickly, and it's gonna be a bit difficult because, well, it's dark gray on gray, but don't worry, we'll figure it out. And uh, what I'll do is I'll also show you how I do like a bit of bleaching which is basically that in reverse, okay? So let me mix my paint up like I've done before and we'll have a go at that. Right, okay, got my paint sorted out. Uh, I'll just show you what we're gonna be doing and it's very, very basic or very small as it were. Um, and we're just gonna paint that little side here or the edge around where the randall is and just show you how I get that demarcation um, between the, basically the two greys. It is a dark slate grey and a dark sea grey, although it does look green. And there is a slight sort of like tinge of green to it anyway. Um, and basically all I do is I'll, I'll look at this and I'll keep this so it's right next to me and I can sort of like seek out and pick out where the actual demarcation is. So on, on that you're looking at say the second major sort of like rib on the, the um, elevator, or aileron, shall I say. And it'll work on a bit of an angle, and it's gonna be, say, sort of like, one, two, three, four, five, six, about six or seven sort of like struts going inwards, but at an angle. Now, if you don't get that correct angle straight away, then don't worry about it, because when you cut in with the dark sea gray, you can actually do it on that way. So there is sort of like no sort of like, um, you know, once you've done it, that's it, forget it, you can't do it again. No, rubbish, you can go over it as many times as you want to get that particular angle. Now, I do freehand um, basically because I, I do like a bit of a sort of like a feathered sort of like graduation between the two colors rather than sort of like, you know, a definite difference between the two. So this is the reason why I do the freehand. Now you can do freehand, you can do use masks, you, you do whatever you want. Um, but I'm just gonna show you how I do it. And it's quite simple and you don't have to like smack your head um, to make sure it works. So anyway, I can keep that with me. So I'm gonna put that just down there. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just pretend um, that we've done the dark sea gray and then we're putting in our demarcation. So we've got the wing, we've got the subjects, we've got the paint, that's all tickety boo. And like what we said, it's gonna go from basically from here, okay, at an angle going up to probably was it the main prominent one, which will be here. Okay, so basically we're going from here to there and that's it, you, all you need to pick out. So you can basically start wherever you want. You can start from the outside in or from the actual markation first, and then that way it's entirely up to you. But what I'll do is for this subject, I shall go from the demarcation and go up that way. Again, if you want it to sort of like stick in your memory a bit more, then you can go from there and just pretend to go up and all the rest of it. So that's basically what you're doing. You basically, it's muscle memory. 
okay or memory muscle or whichever way you want to say it okay so now we can commit to paint so we're going to start there and we're just going to go like that so hopefully you can see where i've sprayed there's a tool i can see it but obviously differences in the camera so i can see where it is and yeah there you go and all you have to do then is basically keeping it at an angle of basically going that way because what you don't want to do is spray it that way and get overspray now this is where it comes in to the masking now i haven't masked any of the bottom or and obviously the top because we're doing it freehand but what i'll do is let me show you this that when you're actually airbrushing it's all about controlling the airbrush through your wrists and your brain and your eyes and all that kind of stuff and if you can keep at the angle that's not going to put different paint onto your other paint as in the two different contrasts say for example you've got like um, a green and a brown like say like a an ref second world war aircraft you don't want sort of like overspray so if you keep it at an angle away from the color that you don't want to contaminate then you really shouldn't have any issues whatsoever and all it is is a case of making sure that you keep that angle so you're not going to get the actual overspray now one thing i do see as well um and it's not anyone's fault you know you're not doing anything wrong but what i do see is is people sort of like put in uh, masking tape all along here then all along there just to make sure that they don't get um, any overspray now did i used to do that yeah every single time because i was paranoid um i didn't want to get any overspray now to combat that all you need to do is to move the kit part and your airbrush and it's as simple as that so you've got that demarcation between let's say the gray or the slate gray against the sky so all you need to do is to angle let's say 90 degrees okay or maybe a little bit less than that maybe 60. so with your airbrush all you need to do now i can see this you probably can't but there's a distinct difference between i've got the dark gray here on the very sort of like um leading edge of the wing and i can just see about here is where the actual slate gray is because i've had an angle like that and it's not covered because it's not seen with the airbrush so all you would need to do is to make sure that you've got say like an angle say 60 degrees or so just for an example you are going to get the bits that you've missed also you're going to get the leading edge of the wing as well and at the same time whew, you're not going to get any overspray on the sky paint okay allow me to demonstrate and you can go back and forth it doesn't matter because you're not going to get the overspray on that side again as long as you're spraying away from the color that you don't want to contaminate or overspray then you'll be fine now again it's difficult for you to probably see this but now i can see that the slate gray has gone all the way onto the top on the top edges and also if you look okay it is now covered the leading edges now just have an overflip okay now you'll probably got to take my word for it but i'm not going to fill you full of phlegm i can tell you now that there's no overspray on that whatsoever all i'm left with is still the dark gray underneath the actual sky gray or the sky green so i say okay and that's how we do it well that's how i do it okay so there you go freehand camo nicely freehand painting away from your area that you don't want to contaminate and again 
use the angles, use your kit, and also use your airbrush as well. Okay, and there you go. Right, ladies and gents, um, hopefully you've learned a little bit and it's not an absolute pain in the ass when it comes down to the actual airbrushing itself. It's quite simplistic, it's just using um, what you've got, as in your airbrush and the kit, thinning your paint and, and making sure that you're comfortable in painting in what you're using, like the airbrush, your, your air pressures, and your actual thinning of the paint. Again, all that in a collective is up to you, okay? And the only thing I will say is a definite is practice. Always practice, whether it's on a sheet of paper before you commit to actual um, your kit, or on a bit of plastic card, and just bugger about, you know, making squiggly lines or funny faces or painting a big willy on it or something. I don't know, whatever you do, whatever's your, whatever your bag is, okay? But it's a question of patience, perseverance, thank you Molly, and practice. The three Ps. Yeah, hey, I've made something up. Hey, perseverance, practice, and patience, whatever. Anyway, my name's Lenny. You've been watching this video. If you're still awake, fantastic. If not, I shall see you on the next video. So until then, take care. See you later. Goodbye.